one thing I said that I was going to do when I built this was check on the thermal paste application afterwards. Um, I don't know how many of you watched that build and remember that the thermal paste was applied basically as a small line. In fact, I'm going to pull that off first. So the thermal paste was applied in a line on the CPU. Arranged with the die. And we're just going to open this up since it's been on and off a couple of times and allowed to heat up and you know the paste will have had a chance to flow under pressure and really fill in any of the crevices. Uh, but it hasn't been on so long that the paste will have dried out or anything where I can't just put it back on and get a look at our application. And as you can see, we've got a near perfect application. We've, we, we don't have this corner and this corner um, covered in paste, but we've got a nice even coat that matches with the bottom of the heat sink. And overall, that's that's what we want. Um, so this paste application is particularly good and uh, I usually have good results with exactly that method um, just just a line across the die. That's not going to work on some of the well probably most of the AMD Ryzen designs that use a chiplet approach as opposed to a single monolithic die. So this particular approach works best on Intel chips where you know the orientation of the die underneath the heat spreader. Um, that said, I just I just wanted to check on that and show you on camera how that looks uh, post application and when it's been allowed to you know heat up and reflow and cool off a little bit. Um, these corners that it missed, you know, that's why I said it's not quite perfect. However, there's no die underneath those corners. There's no silicon. So that's just a little bit more metal to metal contact that could have existed. The actual effect of that in practice is not something I can measure. Um, so I'm not going to redo my paste application just for those. If I saw some large void in the middle or something like that where an air bubble had been, uh, number one, I would have seen it in my performance testing uh, as just ridiculous thermal throttling, but number two, I, I would redo the application in that scenario, um, which I've never seen with this particular application type or this paste. The paste I used was Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut, um, and that does require a high mounting pressure to perform well because it's a very thick paste. However, since we're screwed into I believe metal, well, it might be plastic, a plate underneath the board, and we're not using something like Intel's push pin retention mechanism, we have a high mounting pressure. Um, and what I normally work on, things like servers, I always have a metal plate underneath the socket for the heat sink, so there's always a high mounting pressure. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just put this back together. I could reapply the paste since I've, you know, opened it up. However, in my experience, since the paste on here is less than a couple of weeks old, it hasn't had a chance to cure or harden or anything like that. Where I would see an issue, although I am going to retest and just double check and make sure that we didn't cause any air bubbles when I'm done here, um, but I'll do that you know, off camera and throw something up in text if I end up having to eat my words and reapply my paste after opening this. Um, that said, if this had been here for a year or two, I would be more concerned. Um, since pastes can dry out and get hard, so, just make 
sure. Yeah. I do like these retention mechanisms with the springs that you can you just tighten down till it stops and you're done. No fighting with pins, no worries about the specific application torque or anything like that. And uh, since I had the video card out for the closing thoughts on that, I'm going to go ahead and stick it back in. You know what? I bet that I'll have more room so I can get the card lined up. There we go. If I take this piece of plastic out. <laughs> oh, problem solved. So there we have it. Um, that's what thermal paste looks like with that particular application method. And that's going to work on basically any Intel CPU. Um, all the way up to the most recent 10900K, that particular application method. As long as you're using a cooler with appropriate mounting pressure, and like I said, as long as it's an Intel chip, um, AMD chips are different because they do use a chiplet approach. So there's no lining it up with the die when you do that. Uh, you can, and I've done before, the scrape a thin layer across the entire CPU die. Um, and that works. That works very well. But it is more time consuming. And in my experience, at least on the Intel side of things, didn't really benefit me any. Um, if I was using a much larger CPU, like the uh, server chips, something like an LGA 2011 CPU, or one of the new absolutely massive, uh, God, what is, the, what is the socket for the new Xeon gold and platinum chips? Um, whatever socket that is, due to the increased size on the heat spreader, I probably would go through and do the spread since there's just so much more area to cover and there's room for problems. But anything like an LGA 1151, 1155, the new LGA 1200, um, LGA 1366 chips, just straight line across the die and you're done. Um, just make sure it looks like a fat little caterpillar. That said, um, I want to say thank you to our patrons and anyone who helps support Pocket Bowls in any way. Um, if you are interested in being a patron and helping produce, you're helping us in. If you are interested in being a patron and helping us to produce content, uh, there'll be a link in the description below. I want to do a shout out for Electrics for providing our opening and closing music. If you're interested in hearing more of his music, which I encourage you to, there'll be a link to his channel in the description below. And with that said, um, if anyone has any questions or, or any comments, feel free to put them in below and we'll do our best to answer them. We always make sure to try and answer questions and respond to constructive commentary. With that said, thank you for watching.